Howdy all, Simon here. So we're gonna look at cryptos and then we're gonna sort out our um, FX trades, etc. I wanna show you a few things just to be aware of and although I'm not a big fan of recency bias, i.e. where pe pe people look at what you know things have done in the past and it's likely to happen. Um, the thing is with cryptos, it's consistently proving to us that uh, technical analysis you know needs to be taken with a big pinch of salt um, and if you're trading cryptos using technical analysis you need to make sure that your uh, your risk management is in place and you know so um, but the thing is there is a saying in the markets that history doesn't repeat itself but it rhymes really really well normally with a sinister tone or tune and cryptos is exactly the same thing it's quite fractal in nature and it does pretty much emulate what um, patterns it's done in the past so uh, I know I've done this before but it's worth having a bit of a recap because what's happening right now is is, is playing out as before it's just rhyming pretty well so here back in 2016 we had you know big big rise um, we had then a compression very similar to this 6,000 base that we had but back then it was six hundred and fifty uh, dollars we then had a big um, we your pants time and it then recovered ish um, and then it started a big rally up okay and so it once we got past the sort of the confluence around 650 675 it then shook off shook off took off um, and if you can see if we zoom in a bit it really did rally I mean everything went pretty much near all-time highs um, before having a big big pullback look at that bar there back to sort of the, the noise and the noise here being the, this sort of area here uh, the noise was short-lived well sorry the, the pullback was short-lived um, we had then an, in fact we had another second bite of the cherry that's probably the the Johnny come lately is going oh missed it here let's force it down then push it back up and then we're off to the races and what we find with Bitcoin is that whenever we hit all-time highs it I mean, with any other market, with crypt, um, with FX, commodities, stocks, whatever, you tend to see massive um, pullbacks or drops because people um, that are underwater, they sell, etc. And then, yeah, we see a bit of a pullback. But with Bitcoin, it tends to just shove the finger at the um, at all-time highs and it uses it as a, a launch pad. Nearly every single time we see all-time highs, um, like here, all-time high, it just, yep, see you later. Um but it always retests the all-time high. So look at this all-time high here. It hits it, goes right, see ya. But guess what? It then retests, it pulls back and retests previous support. Um, so in this case here, we saw the all-time high, it launched. Um, and don't forget, yeah, we will have little pullbacks, 20, 30% pullbacks along the way. But look what happened here. We, we, we saw massive all-time high, but guess what? we then had like a, almost a 50% pullback back to retest uh, previous support, uh, previous resistance, now support. Uh, as you can see there, it went all the way up here, all the way back down here. Uh, so this is something that you need to have in the back of your mind that it will happen. It nearly always happens with cryptos, always. <laughs> uh, and again, along the way, you tend to always see pullbacks of previous um, resistance. Uh, and we see this all the time. So let's move for, for like, so please don't kid yourself. All of these little wicks all the way down. It's just the big money, bigger or bigger people going, oh, I'm missing the boat here. Let's ram it down. Let's get our fill and then let the market uh, rally. So moving on to the next um, piece of the pie, piece of the puzzle is we then had another sort of all time high. We then had a, a compression. It then spiked down we then had a bit of a v reversal it basically pumped through the the noise here so the noise in this point was two four hundred to six hundred and look it like before it almost rallied to all-time highs before so let's just have a quick um recap i just want to show you so yeah with this one here it rallied to almost all-time highs before pulling back to the noise just like um, with this one here we had rallies to almost all-time highs before pulling back to the noise uh, all the way back down to here um, so this is why I'm, I'm pretty I'm, I'm optimistic I'm guardedly optimistic etc uh, so looking where we are now 
same thing, except it's played out a lot longer, bigger picture, as I said, fractal in nature. Guess what's happened? We've had a meteoric rise. We are spiking. We've got out of the noise, and the noise really with Bitcoin is anywhere between 6,000 and 8,000-ish. I mean, you could say 10,000 to 6,000. Um, let's just be broad brush here for the moment. Let's just say the noise is anywhere around here. In fact, that is sloppy. Let's just draw some lines instead. Um, the broadest picture of the noise is, I guess, this bit here. Um, <coughs> possibly add in sort of the eight and a half thousand around here. Um, so yeah, we could see a bit of a rally up to sixteen thousand using again recency bias here um, before smashing back down to um, ten thousand. So we could. See further movement up here, 15, 16,000 before seeing a bit of a pullback to the, the 10,000, maybe the 9,000. Um, but I, I, I do think it's getting becoming increasingly unlikely that we'll see the 8,000 uh, and the 7,000 hit again. Um, but again, regardless, whatever happens here, it, we are likely to see uh, movements, whether it, whether it gets back down to here or um, here. Um, we're, we're likely to see a uh, quick, sharp movement. So let's just get rid of all the doodles um, and look at where we are now. It is massively overextended, um, massively. Uh, but again, Bitcoin defies normal logic um, and it will go uh, overextended. Um, but one thing I wanna recap is that I've mentioned the seesaws. So all my students know that I, I love a good seesaw. So really quickly um, so basically if you have uh, a couple of um, currencies so you can have a B C a could be roaring B could be crashing and C could be just going sideways when you have when you compare the, the, the patterns so if you have um, the currency pair of a to B because a is going up and B is going down this will be going parabolic Whereas if you had, say, B slash C, so this pairing, B and C, because B is going down and C is going flat, yeah, you're going to, basically the net result is going to go down. Um, just like, uh, and again, if you had a a C pairing over here, the, the, the net result is, is going to be up again. Now, what we're seeing, if we look at the, let's make this a bit bigger again. So at the moment, you'll, you'll probably be seeing that Bitcoin against dollar is doing this. Um, and Bitcoin against pretty much anything else, it, it's going up. But you have to ask, what is US dollar doing on its own, not in, in a paired against anything else? What is it doing? So let's just quickly grab a chart over here and actually look at the dollar index. And you'll see that the dollar has been right. Well, it has been rising in the long run, which I, I guess if you were to put Bitcoin on, overlay Bitcoin on this, you'll you'll see they, they, they tend to be inversely correlated. But if you look recently over the, the last, I guess, um, since the 18th, we've had a bit of a, a bit of a fall. And if you look since the 18th, we've had 18th. We then, so yeah, Bitcoin really started to rocket off from the 18th onwards. Um, and guess what? From the 18th, the dollar index fell. So a lot of people are saying, oh, Bitcoin's rallying because of Facebook, because of blah, blah, blah. I think that there's, there's always other angles. Um, I think the main reason being, really, is that the dollar index is just falling. The dollar itself is getting weaker. So if the dollar is getting weaker, when you compare the dollar against the against Bitcoin, of course, um, uh, yeah, if the dollar's going down, um, of course, and let's just say uh, Bitcoin itself was, I don't know, flat because nothing's going on, guess what's going to happen? Um, when you compare Bitcoin to dollar, of course it's going to go up. Now, I'm not saying it's flat, it's probably going up as well, so it's exacerbating the move. Um, but the thing is, the, the thing that I'm looking at right now is is the dollar going to continue falling? Now, if you were to include the 200 EMA, which is what pretty much all the big boys look at, I don't really look at it because it's, it's more longer picture, but you'll find that 
the 200 EMA or the 150, I mean, you could add in a 150 as well. Um, let's add in a... It's a bit of a range, really. So if you were to basically color in the, um, the, the, the space, I guess, between the 150 and the 200, that would give you a nice sort of a, a band of support or resistance. And you'll find that if you go look at the dollar index, it will nearly, it will always react to the dollar index, um, to the, the 150 and the 200. So as you can see here, it's using the 150 and the 200 as resistance, and then it breaks through. And guess what? On the way, look, it pulled all the way back down to the 150, etc., etc. So this is a band of resistance which or support which the dollar index looks at. And I guess you can look at pretty much anything. Um, Mo most things would stick would adhere to this uh, if you let's look at a stock market so the Australian stock market a completely random one um, yeah somewhat six or it on the way up it really did stick to stick to this um, but yeah going back to the dollar index what's happening right now so what we've seen is that the dollar since 2018 has been rallying hard. Again, another reason why Bitcoin's been falling because the dollar's been rising. Um, and it's been attacking this, this support level. And right now it is hitting, it is literally just smashed off the 200 e um, EMA uh, and is now recoiling. Now the thing is, the question I'm asking myself, is this gonna recoil back up here? Is that what's gonna happen? Because if you look at the overall trend, ah, Really should be looking at this on the weekly chart. Excuse me. Um, yeah, you can see the overall trend is up. Uh, let's just go back down. Um, back up. So, are we at the very least going to be re attacking these highs, the sort of the 12,500 level of the dollar index, as in the strength of the dollar? If this happens, if massive, massive if uh, we get back, if this continues rallying, guess what Bitcoin's going to do? Bitcoin's going to have a bit of a pullback. Um, so, yeah, if we look at where we were at the beginning of, of, or on the 18th before we started crashing, so the 12,350 level around here, guess where Bitcoin was? Whoops, wrong one. Ah! Um, Bitcoin around the 18th was around here. So, yeah, we could potentially see uh, a pullback back down to the 950, 9500 ish level. Basically, I would say between 10,000 and 9,000. That, is, again, massive, massive, massive if if <laughs> the dollar gets back up to the, the these highs here. So this is something I'm looking at. Uh, it looks like, it really does look like we're bouncing off it. Um, so I think this, this is going to be short-lived. Um, I think we may have a bit of a spike to 13, 14, may, quite potentially. Um, but it's, yeah, it's interesting. If we now look at, say, I mean, I'm look, personally looking at Bitcoin ontology, um, that's making new lows almost. Um, so I'm, I'm really eyeing up ontology to get in at these levels here. But if you were to look at ontology against the dollar, uh, ev all the alts against the dollar are starting to break out. So as you can see here, the uh, I'm going to get my pen instead when I'm drawing these. So you can see that we've had some form of compression here and we're now breaking out of this. So yeah, it's gone up. We, we could see a bit of a pullback down to um, the one six hundred level before moving f uh, uh, north again. If you look at, uh, again, NEO against um, against the dollar, again, it's broken out as well. Uh, everything is breaking out. So remember, when Bitcoin surges, um, what tends to happen is that alt lag behind it uh, but then eventually people take profits or they divest their Bitcoin profits into alts and then alts out accelerate Bitcoin nearly always. So that's cryptos for you. Um, again, I've still got my eyes set on ontology. So yeah, again, looking at this on the daily chart, this looks like a bearish rectangle. Um, so we could see further falling down to sort of the 1200 level here. Um, but again, that's only if Bitcoin keeps rising, which I mean it probably will, but it, again it all depends on what, what the dollar index is going to do.
Um, so that cryptos for you. Let's have a look at um, sort of the trades. So we're having a bit of a consolidation day. We've had a few actual close out really. Um, a few tiny trades as you can see here. Um, uh, but what have we got left? So we've got the uh, uh, the short. So we're, we're shorting. Uh, let's get a little pad out of the way. Let's have a look at the SPX. So, whoopsie days. Where? What is the mothership doing? It's the S and P five hundred. So we're shorting that. We we got uh, annoyingly. We entered a short or here, which we got filled, and this one we missed us by again, and that's bollock. Um, before uh, plummeting down, so we would have had. Oh no, my shortcuts are gone. Um, yeah, could have been a bit good, five hundred odd points up. But yeah, so we're gonna wait and see see how that one happens, uh, how that one goes. Um, what else do we have? Let's move this to another screen. Ah oh, yeah, dollar, pound, dollar. That move has uh, worked quite nicely actually. Uh, we've got filled in lovely, lovely of a wick in. Uh, I'm leaving my stop as it is at the moment, just to give it a bit more, bre more breathing space because we haven't seen a clear um, direction of where we're going to go. Uh, pound loony again, we're we're still shorting that. With this one, I'm actually going to move my stops down. We can afford to move our stop down to sort of these levels, just above the double O, um, for the moment. And again, we've got our little longs here set up. Uh, pound Swissy doesn't really isn't really doing much at the moment. We've gone long. Both have been filled. We've got to wait out there. Um, what else? Yeah, that's about it. Um, in terms of new setups, uh, let's have a look. I've got a few that I want to place. Um, so with this one, I want to remove these orders. Uh, and, and place new ones. So I think uh, I'd like to go get if we zoom in a bit. Um, I want to get in just before the double O here. Ah, uh, my stupid shortcuts. Are short. I've <laughs> just had to reinstall the software, and all my shortcut keys have disappeared. So I'd like to get in on here um, and have a, a stop around, sort of just above the five zero there, and then have a bit of a low ball uh, around here. So let's just quickly place this. Um, so what is this? Ah, bloody hell. So going in here, having a 70 pip stop. Ah, bloody hell. One sec. I'm going to have to re reset some of these systems. Okay, I'm back in the room. Got my shortcuts back so I can carry on. So we're going to short this. Uh, we're saying we have a 70 pip stop. Let's just quickly put that in there. Um, and then I'm adjusting the risk. I'm only doing a quarter of a percent on this particular trade. So that's that. And we're going to have a bit of a high low ball. So 40 pip stop on this one. Again, not risking much. Another one, a quarter of a percent on this. Job's good. So that's uh, for dollar Swissy. Uh, what else do we have? We have pound yen. Come on, pound yen. Stop running away. There we go. Um, pound yen looks like a, a nice short. I, I really do think so. We pound. The pound is a bit weird at the moment. So there's some charts. So some charts look in, incredibly bearish, and some look like they're reversing. So we're going long on pound dollar. So what you'll find is that I've got a. I'll be somewhat hedging um, the positions a bit, but each of the, the the trades that we have on all have different sort of time frames and targets. So with this one, this actually looks a bit. Um, bearish to me this could be the start of a bearish rectangle um, again it's re-attacking the eight so what I want to do is have um, get in here and have a stop above the five zero um, so sort of shorting at market with this one so I have a uh, call that 105 pip stop and then we'll do another low ball so shorting this at market um, and let's just change the risk on this bit. So again, I'm rushing through this. Rushing is not a good idea with trading. So, um, and again, having a 45 pip stop on this one. So,
yeah, 122 risk on that. Yep, quarter of a percent. So that's that. Uh, again, I don't like the stops being identical. I like splitting my couple of pips. Cool. There we go. So that's pound yen um, set up. We got Euro Aussie. So Aussie's looking uh, funny at the moment. Um, this is a is a long for me. Um, again, we're we've just smashed into the 21 EMA again. Um, so yeah, like the 8 EMA bounce, you can also do the 21 EMA bounce. Uh, 8 and 21 EMAs I've been using for like 10 years, anyone that's been around, um, I love it. So th with this, I I'm actually gonna, yeah. So this would be going to market with a 95 pip stop. Um, and again, if we had another actually disregard it's 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 too ropey i think it is um in terms of a low ball it's too we've already had that i think we'll just do a quarter of a percent um and just do one entry on this one um so we're gonna have go in at market with a 100 pip stop but literally just a quarter of a percent um so 100 and we're going long no low balls on this one so that's that again there's no targets on these ones we are just trailing so that's uh, Aussie that, and then we've got, here we go. And again, I'm shorting this one. This is another quarter of a percent. Uh, the stop for this is gonna be relatively small. It's only gonna be a 50 pip stop. Um, shorting, so 50. There we go. <coughs> So that's that. So we, we've basically got half a percent of max of risk on Aussie. So uh, Kiwi, 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 Kiwi Yen. Yeah, this is a short. We are smack. This is going to be a quick short for me. Um, well, one, I'd like to have. So the first little trade, I'm only going to have um, sort of a, a 20 pip stop with a 190 pip. Yeah, 100 pip limit. So with this one, what I'm actually going to do, I want to wait that. Nah, I'm trying to squeeze too many pips out. So with this one, again, quarter of a percent. Uh, we're going to have a 20 pip stop, but with a 100 pip limit. So we have a nice 5R there. It will be about 4.8R in reality. Um, again, quarter of a percent max risk. Hurry up. Happy with that. So that's a, a relatively short term-ish trade there. Uh, yeah, we could squeeze it above here. I, I don't think um, we need to pay too much attention to this um, uh, local noise here. I think we, if I am correct with this trade, it's literally gonna be a quick bounce off this uh, 7200 level. Um, so that's that. And what I'm also gonna do is place another trade, another quarter of a percent max risk trade, um, but this one is literally just to um, to, to trail. Um, so let's short short this again, twenty pips, and this one I'm going to let run. So that's another. There we go. Let's move this stop a bit. Ah, come on. There we go. <clears throat> right, yo. So that's pound yen. Um, these aren't necessarily, uh, yeah. So this one we we missed out on this one, but that's fine because it's only just broken out. Um, it's it's basically the, the trend is your friend till the bend at the end. It's roughly broken out of this this support level. Um, it we had the move down, pull back up, and it's now bounced away. I think. What I'm looking for is a nice pullback to this uh, double O level. Um, so this is where we can have a, a nice uh, double O, so sorry, double double entry. Um, so with this, having a 150 pip stop um, and then the low ball. So if we get a pullback to this level, That's quarter of a percent there. And then 
a low ball if it really does try to attack this double O we'll have a nice sort of 70 pip sell 70 there we go it's pound kiwi and then one more for the Aussie yeah I'm gonna leave it at the moment we've got enough Aussie um, stuff on the go so that's that hope that makes sense and I'll see you all soon toodles bye